you have a, a trio of questions on the paper here and um, they cover on the face of it slightly different areas but when it comes down to it they're all motivated by your your recent work in terms of what's being done or proposed by the Department of Health and Social Care. Yes, um, the question to the Attorney General, for example, um, is is about the consultation process. Uh, there's a government document which covers how government should consult. I wrote to the Chief Secretary um, and eventually I received a reply from the Chief Minister which indicated that the Department of Health and Social Care, for example, in the policies in relation to removal of incontinence products from people who are in nursing homes or on the Meals on Wheels service, that it was their opinion they didn't have to consult because those matters they considered to be operational matters. I don't agree. I believe they're changes in policy. And I'm asking the Attorney General if he could clarify that matter for me. Whether he's going to be able to or not, uh, the jury's out. It's a government document and people expect there to be consultation and there's been none on either of those. Now, that's one of the questions. Along similar lines, you have a question for the, questions for the new Health and Social Care Minister about the, the approach he's going to take along similar lines, effectively. And then this all relates to decisions which have been taken by the Department of Health and Social Care by the previous minister with things like incontinence pads, meals on wheels. These are issues that have proved incredibly unpopular in terms of public reaction. And again a lot of people say, seem to fly in the face of what government claims to be wanting to do, i.e. create a fair and inclusive society. Is that your impression it's as well? Exact, it's exactly my impression. Um, and also, some of the policy decisions that the former department have come out with have been very badly, in my opinion, communicated with um, interested parties. The, the department issues loads of press releases, but to issue a press release uh, about, about removal of services or about uh, changes, as I, as I see in, in policy, isn't the right way to do it. I believe there is a, a better way in which we can have a conversation with the public who are there to serve. Now, you've been a minister yourself in the past. Just how much of an influence can a new minister have coming in? Just how much can they affect and change policy in line with their own personal beliefs? And how much of it is actually down to those behind the scenes, the senior civil servants and the like? Yes, now I've heard this discussion uh, going on latterly that uh, that ministers um, have to do what civil servants say. They don't have to do what civil servants. Civil servants can come forward with recommendations and, and usually do. Ultimately, it is for the minister to decide whether a policy will progress or not. It is for the civil, senior servant, the senior civil servant, to determine what are going to be controversial issues. And clearly, a number of the ones which have been introduced of late have been controversial and have caused much concern. And so the senior civil servant has to have a feel for those kind of issues, because clearly on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it would be impractical for everything to uh, to be considered. But when there are controversial matters, such as those which uh, I've described, then uh, the minister ultimately is the department and is the person who will make the decision, and that will be on the advice of the civil servant. And either that's not failing or it's seen as a way of getting out of responsibility, and that I, I don't want ministers to get out of the responsibility for policies introduced in their name for the department. Everyone can see that it's very, very difficult within departments of health and social care funding-wise. Absolutely. Obviously, this uh, sitting, the department is coming back to ask for additional funding as well to cover mm. a big shortfall, which... I think it was hoped would be covered by the extra money already put into the budget for the, the current year. But I think some people feel that these sorts of policies, as well as targeting the wrong people, they seem to tinker around the edges. They save a few tens of thousands here, a hundred thousand there, when you're talking about millions, millions and millions overall. Yes, that's exactly how, I, again, that's exactly how I see it. Uh, the, a number of these have been aimed at, for example, non-statutory services. The Meals on Wheels thing was a non-statutory service, so it's easy to do away with that. Um, however, uh, if then 
ill thought through or if they're only saving minimal amounts of money, I think there should be more concentrate, concentration on, on the bigger issues affecting the department. And I believe, um, you know, the, I'm on the Public Accounts Committee. We've been looking at areas uh, of expenditure within the Department of Health and Social Care. A report will be laid before Tinwald on that matter. Um, also, the Treasury Minister has a resolution on the Tinwald agenda uh, seeking a, a full review, in, an independent review of how the department's functioning uh, in the future. So these are issues which are big issues but and need to be tackled, but I think there's too much tinkering around the edges rather than facing uh, the big issues that uh, are presented. And also, I'd rather see, rather than the Department of Health and Social Care uh, and the vulnerable people being those who all too often seem to be first to have to stand up and 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 take uh, uh, areas of that I don't consider uh, the the right ones, but there are other areas around government where other savings could be made which wouldn't affect vulnerable people. And if we are sincere about the government policy which you've just uh, described, then we need to be a bit more open and honest about that. In my opinion.